I can type almost 100 words per minute on a standard QWERTY keyboard. That makes me faster than almost 96% of the population. I have spent decades learning to become a master of the standard QWERTY keyboard. But almost a month ago, I decided to give all of that up and start from scratch learning a completely new keyboard layout that virtually nobody has heard of. So why would I want to learn the Comac keyboard layout? Well, the simple fact of the matter is that I happen to be an absolutely massive nerd, and I think things like that are ridiculously cool. But more importantly than that, I am also a full-time student, someone who spends hours and hours every single day typing on the computer, and my wrists, my fingers were starting to hurt. And I said, you know what? I'm relatively young. Hopefully, I will have many, many, many more years of typing ahead of me. And I don't want to get up every single day and type on the computer knowing that it is hurting me. So I started looking for alternative keyboard layouts that were more efficient, and I found Colmac. This is a keyboard layout that rearranges the letters on the standard QWERTY keyboard to make it more efficient and to reduce the strain on your wrists and fingers. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the theoretical advantages of the Colmac keyboard and we will talk about my personal experiences after one month of learning Colmac. So was it worth it? How quickly did I learn? All of those questions in today's video. Now, the first thing that I want to do is talk about the theoretical advantages of the Colmac keyboard. And to do that, I'm going to use an absolutely fantastic website by Patrick Wide. And what this website does is you give it a block of text and it will generate a heat map that shows you how frequently each letter on the keyboard would be pressed. So when we are looking at this is Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven. Wow, that's a lot of P's in one sentence. Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven. We are looking at this on a standard QWERTY keyboard. And what you will notice is that virtually none of the most frequently typed letters are on your home row. So the green and the red, those are the letters that you're typing the most. Almost all of the letters are requiring you to do a significant amount of movement. Now, this is problematic for a number of reasons. Number one, the more movement you do, the more time it takes, right? So again, this is a theoretical perspective. In theory, the more movement you're doing, the longer it's going to take. Now, obviously, if you practiced QWERTY for decades, you're going to become accustomed to it. But in theory, you're wasting a lot of movement. But more importantly than that, when you're doing all that movement, you're putting your hands, your wrists into kind of awkward positions, right? So if you're typing on the home row, it's pretty simple. You're just pressing straight up and down. When you're having to reach, and this is something that aligns with my experience, the E, specifically typing the E on the QWERTY keyboard is a nightmare because it is, as you can see, the most frequently used letter, and it requires you to not only use your weak hand, but to move it into kind of an awkward position. So QWERTY is problematic for a number of reasons. Now, let's take a look at Colmac. When we look at Colmac, we see that every single one of the most frequently used letters is on the home row. So again, in theory, that's going to make us faster, but more importantly, it's going to reduce those weird kind of turning and twisting that we have to do with our wrists and our fingers. Now, this is just one example. You can go to the website, you can put in different text, this is just one example, but it seems to align with my experience. And in fact, the Colmac website says that in general, Colmac gives you half as much finger movement as QWERTY. And on top of that, 35 times, 35 times, not 35%, 35 times more words can be typed on the home row. So in theory, we're doing less movement, which is going to be more efficient. It's going to be better for our hands and it should increase our speed. How did that actually work out for me? Well, as you can see here, prior to starting any kind of Colmac training, I was at about 95 words per minute on a standard QWERTY keyboard. Now, I'm not here to brag, but that is really good. Standard typing speeds for most jobs are about 40 to 60 words per minute is considered acceptable, right? So I was doing really good. I didn't switch to increase my speed, right? And in fact, I knew I've been practicing QWERTY for several decades. I knew I was going to see a decrease in speed. 
it's just how much of a decrease, right? So obviously day one, learning a new keyboard layout, zero, right? Zero, I know nothing, right? So there's no sense even doing a day one typing test because it would be zero. However, what you will notice is that by the end of the first week, I was able to get 28 words per minute with 97% accuracy. Is that good? Absolutely not. That is not good at all, right? If you're coming from almost 100 words per minute to 30 words per minute, that's a significant decrease. And keep in mind, I'm a full-time student. So I have to write essays. I have to write papers. So I had a couple strategies that helped me with this. When I was writing my essays, I have a program on my computer. If you use Linux, you can use it as well. It's called SpeechNote. And what it does is it is a completely free speech to text program and you just speak words and it turns them into text on your computer. So when I was writing a lot for my essays, I would do that so that it would type it. And then what I did after six days of practicing on the website, I switched my keyboard layout on my computer to QWERTY full time. So I would do most of my typing with the speech to text and then I would go and touch up a word here or there using the Colmac keyboard. And I found that to be really helpful instead of doing Colmac for practice, then QWERTY for real, right? I wanted to just straight up do Colmac. So that's the end of one week. By the end of the second week, I was hitting about 40 words per minute, which keep in mind, isn't fantastic, isn't amazing, but it's acceptable, kind of the low end of acceptable for general jobs. Now, obviously, if you're a professional typist, someone in customer service, you're having to type a lot, not so great, but I was really proud of that, that by the end of two weeks, I had an acceptable typing speed. And then by the end of a month, I was hitting about 49 words per minute. So remember, 40 to 60 is kind of the good standard of typing speed. So with only a month, I was right in the middle of where I needed to be. So you're probably saying, okay, how much time did you practice? Well, I used a online website and I did about nine and a half hours of dedicated practice, right? So this is nothing but typing on the Colmac layout. And like I said, nine and a half hours. Now I did do a little bit because remember I changed my standard keyboard layout to Colmac. I was getting a little bit of extra practice here and there, but as far as dedicated time, about nine and a half hours. So was that time well spent? Well, for me, I think the answer is a resounding yes. Like I said, I'm relatively young. I expect to be typing for many, many, many more years. So my logic was, look, if I can make an investment of 10 hours, even if it's 20, 30, 40 hours, right? If I can make this investment, it's going to pay me back over decades and decades, right? So obviously that is just my personal experience. Your situation is going to be different, right? If you only spend 15 minutes a week on your computer, you probably aren't going to want to spend 10 hours learning a keyboard layout, right? On the flip side, if you are someone that types a lot and expects to continue typing a lot into the future, at least from my perspective, it makes a lot of sense from a cost benefit analysis. So overall, I definitely think it was worth it to make the switch. Now, one additional thing that I do want to discuss very briefly is people will say, well, why didn't you try Dvorak or Workman or whatever, right? Because there's a ton of alternative keyboard layouts. And I went with Colmac for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is an alternative keyboard layout, but it's still pretty widely supported. You can easily switch to Colmac on Linux. You can switch on Windows. I don't have a Mac, so I don't know, but I would imagine you could do it there as well. So you can actually use it, right? right out of the box. You don't have to create an entirely new keyboard map. So that was one thing that was important for me. On top of that, it preserves a lot of keys. So it doesn't rearrange every single key. Compared to something like Dvorak, Colmac has a lot of the same keys in the same position as QWERTY, right? So let's just imagine there's 26 letters in the alphabet. When you're learning Colmac, you don't have to learn every new letter a new key, right? There are some like Control Z, Control C, Control X, right? Some letters are going to stay in the same place, which can make it a little bit easier to learn. And then on top of that, I am going to show you the Dvorak heat map here. What you'll notice is that with Dvorak, it's obviously a lot better than QWERTY, but at least for me, I still didn't, I still don't feel that it was as good as Colmac. So again, if you're learning Dvorak, you know, there's no shade, anything like that here. I think it's going to be a lot more efficient than QWERTY, but at least for me, I thought that Colmac was that kind of perfect balance of ease of learning, 
actual improvement, and then wide support among the various operating systems that I use. So again, that's my experience. I hope you found the video useful. If you have tried learning an alternative keyboard layout or you want to try learning one, be sure and let me know in the comments what layout was it? Did you like it? Was it worth your time to switch? Um, so yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.